Okay, hello all. Um, recently, I, I saw Belle, the newest Mamoru Hosoda movie, um, which I found quite strange because I really like this, this the director. And I like how he always approaches the familial issues with the, the way that he approaches family and, and, and issues concerning families. But this movie was quite different. It was quite strange. And I think I didn't like it that much. So I seeked help. Uh, yeah, I, I had to seek for help to understand the movie. And then I found Dr. Javier Carreño, who is a, a philosopher, who is a professor of philosophy at Franciscan University of Steubenville, who's interested in phenomenology and aesthetics mostly, but other stuff as well. And among this other stuff is anime. <laughs> and only after talking to, to Javier, to Dr. Correño, who is my personal friend as well, so I'll call him Javier from now on, um, did I realize um, the depth in this movie and how uh, interesting issues are, are covered in it and, and addressed. Welcome, Dr. Carreño. <laughs> Hi, Alice, <Javier. laughs> first name. I'm very glad to be here. Thank you, Cuba, so much for inviting me. Thank you for, for coming. And, and let's dig into Bell. Let's not waste any minute because we don't have that much time. And it's an interesting movie. Indeed. What did you like but, the most? Like the visuals, the, the music, the, the plot? Well, the, the the first time around, what I watching it, what I liked the most were, let's say the the, the more evident aspects of it, the the way the the virtual world is animated is spectacular. I don't think I've seen something quite quite as good and as convincing. And then the way that the that the real life story is also told, I found I found quite gripping. Um, the music itself is it's not music, it's rather something very well worked out, very fitting for the kind of the kind of story that is being told. And um, yeah, the, the development of the characters I thought was 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 good overall. So I liked it the first time I watched it. I, I thought though that there were some things that didn't quite make sense to me. And that merited a second viewing. And, and then when I, when I thought about it more and I saw it again, I realized that what I had come to like more were certain philosophical fine points in the in 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 the in the story. So something that I could relate more to to, to philosophy and to aesthetics. And and if I can put it in one word, what I, or one phrase, what I, what I think is powerful about this movie is that it makes the case that the that the that the beautiful can can save the world, the real world. Um, beauty can save the world. That's a that's an expression from Dostoevsky, right? But 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 then um, uh, Studio Chisu continues: beauty can save the world on condition that one's true face is surrendered in, in vulnerability. That, I thought, was very interesting. So I, I, I want to come back to that point at some, yeah, uh, at, at some point in our conversation, but, but in short, that's, that's what I think makes this movie not only worth watching, but also worth pondering about. Yeah, so at first glance, definitely the packaging really strikes you, the, the, the visuals and the music really stays with you. But yeah, what you're saying is that after a second watching, you, you, you really get the, the, the highest or the higher plane of <laughs> ideas hidden in it. But let's start with, with the basics So what, what the movie is about. So it's about um, a very current topic because it's about like your alternate identity and, and about the metaverse or the virtual world. So there's an application called you, which allows people to enter into this metaverse or the, or the, 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 the world, the world within, 
within the computer, right? And yeah, what, what do we know about this world? About this so computer? it is, it is curious. It is, it is a world that makes an avatar for you. Um, it is not necessarily a world in which you, you are holding charge or fully in charge of designing the avatar. And that I thought was very interesting because the, you, let's say, uh, Susu, the main, the, the main character, she, she's very hesitant to, to even use her real face. So there's a certain question as to whether the, the program has used um, her picture or the picture of somebody right next to her who's, who's a very attractive personality. It seems that her, her face is the composite of both. And, and, and in a way, the, the avatars that the program produces, which can't be changed, are, um, are unique in the following way. They, they seemingly work with one's body and uh, so one's real makeup. Um, and they bring out from oneself, let's say, things that one, one wants to be in a way, but perhaps is not fully conscious of. So, so the, the, the program uses kind of like inner strengths or inner characteristics and tries to flesh them out in, in the avatar. And so as a result, everybody seems pretty happy with their avatars, mm. but there's a full range of avatars from those who, who, who seem uh, beautiful and, and others um, not, not quite so. Like, the, 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 the avatar of Bell, as well as, so the avatar of Susu is called Bell, and, and, and the avatar of, of the beast will be particularly strong in, she will be very strong as a singer, he will be very strong as a, as a fighter. And it will turn out that that has to do not only with their bodies, but also with their, with their personalities. Um, their inner personalities. So Susu is someone who wants to sing, but because of a childhood trauma, she can't sing. And then the virtual world fleshes her out as, a, as, as an extraordinary performer. And on the flip side, the beast, right, in reality is actually um, someone who, who suffers, who is, who is disempowered, but that suffering has made him tough which is why in the in the new world, um, he happens to be stronger than than others and and fights them and typically wins. Okay, so I I actually have a few problems with with the whole avatar creation there. Um, first, I thought that okay, so everyone 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 is a monster in 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 this world, right? Because you don't see normal people there. And so Ryu or the beast is a, is a monster. And, and every people, every person that you see there is somehow disfigured or is some, some kind of a strange thing. But Bell was, is the only beautiful character. But today you told me that um, she's actually also a hybrid because a monster is a hybrid of, of different like animals or, or different persons. And she's actually a hybrid as well. So she's also a monster in the sense that, that it is not fully her, but she is like kind of amalgamated with, with the other character because during the character creation scene, uh, the application picked her face together with, with the face of, of this beautiful girl standing right next to her. And she um, didn't she doesn't I mean Belle uh, Suzu doesn't recognize herself at first before she can see the freckles right she doesn't see it as as her face but then she embraces that and and the the question is um, because um, her her avatar is is the one that can sing so it's her inner inner wish, inner willing to, to be that way. And I don't think we could say that about the beast. Would, would that be like his inner 
wish to be like that? So, so in, in, in terms of, of his strength, his, in real life, he's a disempowered character, but one who takes on a lot of suffering. And so without realizing, it's almost as if the, the suffering has made him internally tough. In the avatar, in the, in the you world, his avatar is externally um, strong. But at the same time, yeah, he, he, he is a dragon, a beast in, in, the, in, the, in the new world. And, and it's a good question as to why, why that is. Perhaps one hint would be the following. In the real world, uh, I think his name is Kay. Mm -hmm. he, he has developed something of a, of a guilt um, consciousness or, or a, a, a guilt, how would we call it? Um, trauma of sorts. He, he is the one who blames himself for the situation that has landed his brother uh, and himself um, probably losing his mother. There, there, there is another picture, there's another frame in, let's say, the castle of the beast where the face of the mother is, as it were, erased by, by a punch or what, by what seems like a bullet hole. So almost pointing out the fact that, that, that his mother seems to have died somehow violently. Mm -hmm. And A is, is taking on the, the, the guilt of that. So when in the, in the harder film, the harder scenes of the film where, where, where his father beats him, right? He doesn't defend himself. He, he gives his back. He takes the punches and he tells himself, it's my fault. It's all my fault. So, so perhaps that's the reason why he's not, while strong, he's not beautiful, but, 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 but a beast because he, he doesn't see himself as, as beautiful or normal, but as, 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 as abject in a way, perhaps. Okay, so, so we can see that, that um, you... Um, the, 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 the advertisement for the application promises you a fresh start. Like you cannot start afresh in the real world, but you can start afresh in you. But that, that's quite a misleading um, ad advertising, as advertising usually is. <laughs> um, because um, it doesn't let you escape yourself. Like you cannot come up with your identity it's not it's not like our internet um reality where where you can like invent your your own identity and and be whoever you please to be because it it gathers data from what's inside of you and i'm i'm wondering about this inside because if if, if it's like a shadow or, or <laughs> in the jungian sense is that like a shadow or or the hidden you in, in, in how, how could we like approach this from, from the philosophical perspective, the, the unconscious, the, I don't know. Close, close. I would say it's, it's a concealed self in any way. It is, it is the concealed self um, in reality, right? So uh, maybe it could be a, a, a repressed uh, self, but I don't, necessarily want to 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 put it on their on their on their, their that rubric i think the concealed one is is very helpful because so much of the movie is about the unconcealment of the true face um then uh you you, you were also asking as to what is why is it that 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 the that the advertisement of becoming a new self is fulfilled in, in a world in which the avatar is made for you instead of you tailoring the avatar to your own likeness. And the less charitable answer would be that making your own avatar is kind of time consuming and effortful and, and difficult, right? If investing yourself into a, a virtual world, uh, it, it could become uh, not just a hobby, but a part-time job. How nice it would be instead if I jump into the virtual world and I, 
and I am a different self. But it's very interesting because this other self is not wholly different from my current self. It's not fully another, but it's also not, a, not really myself. But wait a minute, it is maybe my interior self. So, so, so there is, there, there's something, okay, philosophically speaking, there could be something attractive about a program that, that allows you to, to be somewhere in between yourself and a wholly completely different person, right? So, so an, an in-between self, that's, it could be half surprising, but also half matching my expectations. That would keep life in a virtual world interesting, right? Um, it's a little bit like what happens in dreams, isn't it? Because in dreams, I am neither myself nor fully another. But I, I can't help identify myself to a degree with the one in, who lives the dream, right? So, so in the dream world, you could distinguish between the dream writer, which is a part of myself that I'm not aware of, and the dreaming self who experiences the dream in the first person. And, and so even though I know where the dream is going at some point or in some level, at the same time, I'm experiencing it as as new and it surprises me. And, um, and then it filtrates into my real life. So, so if I have a dream about killing cats because I'm allergic to them, and then I wake up, uh, I might be relieved by the fact that no cats were harmed by my dream, but on the other hand, I, I can't help feeling slightly bad about myself. So, may, okay, so maybe this structure is also what makes the new world interesting. You, you are neither fully yourself nor fully another, but I'm in between. Now, of, of course, the, um, the elephant in the room in terms of, of this avatar creation is if it reveals your true self, then if is the virtual actually real and, and reality actually a face <laughs> like when do you wear robes or the garments of skin as as jonathan pajot would say like where, where do you when do you wear a face in reality or in the virtual world it's an it's an excellent question you could say that there's what, what we have in the virtual world as as depicted in the movie is a it's a simulacrum of becoming an ourself, right? That's how it is promised, right? right? It is also said, change the world, but like which world is not clear in the advertisement. The user enters you, seems to become an ourself, but in the meantime, everybody's still kind of wondering, so no, who are you in real life? Who, what is your real face? And on the one hand, people, everybody wants to know who's the real you. And then on the other hand, everybody dreads to be revealed as, as, as the real you, right? So that's why the, the, those who have taken the role of justice, such as, well, this character called Justin. Think Justin. That, <laughs> yeah, nice. Uh, think that, the, that the, the worst that can happen to you in the virtual world is actually to be disclosed as, as the real you. Kind of like, okay, you become somebody else thanks to the program, but as a punishment, we're going to reveal the defective self right. that you're in real life. Uh, so, so there is the that that contradiction, and and I think it's nicely. Let's say that 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 is fitting, in the sense that if by entering into a virtual reality we could fully and completely forget ourselves, then or virtual reality would become a hallucination, right? We would, and we would become wholly different from ourselves. We, we would be completely severed from, from reality, but, yeah. but that, that could be uh, traumatic, right? Whereas remaining oneself while putting on robes and playing on a pageant is actually quite fun as, as carnival revelers know. So yeah, you can actually see that um, 
when when she first when when Suzu first enters the the U, those people that are moving along in a in a line in a, in this flood of of characters, they actually look like a carnival parade. Like each of them in this different dressing and 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 really like moving along as as if like a, a carnival parade indeed. But so I, so it's like they enjoy being or playing as monsters. Yeah. But at the same time, the program has fashioned those monsters with their, let's say, inner selves. That's right. <laughs> so what the program reveals is, is, is their, their stifled, in a way, their, some of their deformities. It accentuates their, their, their inner, inner deformities, but at the same time, it, 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 it offers them something like a, like a Garden of Eden, Mm -hmm. uh, where they they can walk naked and not be ashamed. So right. walk as monsters and not be ashamed. Right. So 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 then yeah, I I, I started thinking about the the mechanics of of this green gun that that reveals your true self. So if you walk naked in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> <laughs> and you get you get shot by this green gun. What does it actually do to you? Like reveal your true self, but hide your true self from the rest. Actually, well, it's a little bit like uh, if you want to put it in theological terms, it's almost like an anticipation of the last judgment. So I'm right. Like you, you, you will no longer be concealed your your true self with your true deeds and misdeeds will all be exposed but then um the the shame that makes that day so awful so dreadful is not that you will be exposed to others who who are also sinners all the same and but but rather that you will be you, you'll be shown uh, or that you'll be you'll be ashamed of having turned away from someone who loved you so much, right? Your, your creator and savior. Anyhow, there are, that could be one, one interesting element of, for, for drawing parallels. If we could also talk a little bit about uh, not only the, the, the avatars, but the world itself. So they say it's created by five sages and it's not really addressed that much later on but there the, there are those five ladies that are training to become uh, to, to for 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 christmas they they, they sing christmas carols or, or is it for easter no for christmas yeah, yeah, yeah. christmas yeah, yeah. <laughs> and wow. there's five of them and i started wondering like if <laughs> they're like you know the singers that that sang this world into being <laughs> <laughs> but they are retired programmers. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I had not thought of that. That's an interesting interconnection because there's there's one thing that I don't understand, and that is why okay, many things I don't understand here, but one of them is the fact that the five of them know that that Susu is bad. Yes. They figure that out, but, but I mean the movie doesn't really give us yeah. any any other clue as to why? I mean, you can understand why why Bell's um, crush slash guardian in the real world, Shinobu, uh, figures that out because, I mean, maybe you kind of have or you kind of get to know the hidden side of of somebody you are drawn to or you try to protect, right? So so maybe maybe Shinobu knows that this. This has to be Bell, also because of the odd way in which um, Susu has has begun to behave in real life. It is it is clear that she's hiding something, and mm -hmm. her dad also knows that. Mm -hmm. Right, it's very evident. But but as to how those five ladies know that she is Bell, yeah, that's 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 a good question. I I, I don't see how the movie answers that. But it's a good suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, because the five voices are, yeah. that sang the world into creation and never go back. They, they just 
They're yep. never mentioned again. They're never mentioned again. So it's it's really strange because why why would they put this this trivia into into this you know into the presentation of the world that there are five sages and and it's like there's it's like a gun on on a it's like a rifle on the wall that never shot <laughs> right yeah that's 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 true um well it, it could lend like here's one interpretation take it or leave it it could be like the reference to to god made by these like Freemasons, right? Mm-hmm. This is like, well, uh, God created the world and and he's watching from a distance, but he's not really intervening in the world, right? Yeah. yeah. It is somehow or somewhat a world left to, to its own devices where where the, the underlings are are the ones who are trying to take some charge. So actually Justin's uh, points about about uh, the need for justice, even in a virtual world, and for, mm-hmm. because there are also villains in a vir- virtual world, um, that's un- something interesting. He, he's, he's telling the truth, he, but he doesn't understand mm-hmm. that he's actually part of the problem, or part of the solution, because he, he's getting too hot on, on his sense of power. In any case, yeah. A suggestion, one of, of the many weird intricacies of this of this flat world. Maybe I could say more on that. <laughs> yeah, if you could, like the flat world, the the strange city that looks like a um, I don't know radiator, uh, <laughs> CPU radiator. It's really like yeah, very repetitive and and very uh, uh, organized. I mean. It's a, yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a move. Well, this second time around watching it, I, I felt like there were, there was something going on with shapes. It's a movie that also wanted you to think about, about shapes as having a certain kind of meaning. So that's, that's worth trying, right? The first time that the, that the U world presents itself, it's not a U. It's a, it's flat. It's a, it's a, it's a long line. It has seemingly no beginning and no end, right? And then it, it will disclose itself with many layers. But at first blush, the first thing that you're presented with is this horizontal line. So I take that to mean that the the virtual world is not like the Earth, which is round, even though or or like a terrain which we experience in real life as having a sort of topography. Um, no, you is is a flat world, which is which is good for for for, for uh, is good in the sense that that our virtual worlds, just like our imaginations and dreams, tend to be kind of flat compared to reality. There's mm-hmm. th- there could be something like a one dimensionality. Think of like that dream that I told you a minute ago or confessed a minute ago about killing cats is a it's flat, it's a one dimensionality, right? But then it it bifurcates and it turns into this city. I'm losing makes... you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. So it's flat Are first. Are we there? And, and yeah, and okay, now I can hear you. It's flat first and then it, so it is flat transforms transforms into a mm-hmm. Well, it, it transforms into, into many levels. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, there's a very good term that Pajot uses for this. What is it? It is, it is like, um, you know, like, 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 a, like a snowflake that fragments or that, that, that percolates, that, that becomes divided in different... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the, the term escapes me, but it begins flat and then it just segments and divides in different levels Mm -hmm. so that there's not a good orientation between what is above and what is below. It's a kind of maze, but it's not constraining. It has a fractal structure. That's probably the world, the word fractal. It does have a fractal structure. Mm -hmm. Um, But 
Right, so, that, so, so it is a horizon that becomes fractal in a way, and, and it doesn't have an up or down. So, so what happens in a world that is designed like that? Well, you begin to miss and to look for uh, circularity, right? And so there's, there's the, the image of a, either of a moon or of a, of a sun that has been partially eclipsed by a moon. Mm -hmm. and so that is added to the horizon, horizon line in the, in the new world, which gives it a sense of openness. It, 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 there is something like an inside this the U city, and then there is the outside, which is a U landscape. Right? It gives it it gives it a horizon, but it's still somewhat of a flat world by my standards. Um, and so we have that communion of the horizontal line with the sun, sun or moon, whichever way you want to take it, and then at towards the end of the movie there's a wavy line there is a horizontal line that has been as it were like broken up mm -hmm. so there has really been a change in the new world mm -hmm. that is not easily explainable then when bell gives her concerts like at first it's um a sphere right a solid sphere again no no direction of what is up or down no, no sense of gravity at all. Um, and then her second concert, people crowding around Bell, right, eventually withdraw and they, they create something like an egg, an mm -hmm. egg shaped. Then when Bell reaches out for the light of justice, right, the light of, that, that reveals her true self, we see that the light also cracks the egg somehow it is it is it is the it is the the light that is and the egg seems to be melting almost like a cloud right the image of the light piercing through the crowd mm -hmm. through the cloud reappearing um then again towards towards the end so well what, what will be the conclusion of this list of descriptions perhaps something like like the following the and you can push back on this, okay? But the world that first appears as flat has been um, fragmented or broken up, or it has been shaken in any case by, by a real love story. What kind of love? That also remains to be discussed, but um, it, is, it, is, it is a world in which, like the egg that cracks open, there is some concealment of a true face and um, yeah, it, it, it is a world that remains pierced afterwards that remains affected by it um, okay so I, I believe in in the symbolic world terms hopefully I'm not doing something illegal here is that the the, the world at the beginning, when it's flat and there's like just those two dimensions, it's just um, the dry land, just order, just hierarchy, nothing else, like with, without life. And then when you have this egg, which is like the symbol of, of life and it breaks and it opens and yeah, so, so she, she brings life to that space. Like it's just space at the beginning, and then after after her actions, it's space space uh, completed with time, with the cyclical time of the circle. That's and very then, good. And then it's and then it's fully stable. Like it, she gives life to the hierarchy. <laughs> yeah, and she gives light too. That right scene is hard. To top in terms of of emotional involvement. It's, um, okay, so anyhow. let's move on to the characters. Let's talk about Suzu. So she she has lost her mother. She she only she lives with her father only, and the way she lost her mother was that her mother sacrificed herself herself 
to save a little boy. And what's important, it was in a river. So, so she drowned. Right? And what I was quite disappointed with in the movie was the complete lack of um, any type of a relationship between Suzu and her father up until quite the, the last 10 minutes. And, and the father was not addressed at all. Like he, he lost his wife after all. Like he must have been facing the trauma as well, but he's like out completely out of the picture. So in, in Hosoda movies, we always have this family thing. And, and here the family was felt like, to me at least in the first um, 80% of the movie felt, felt like it was just missing, right? Okay. Um, yeah, I agree. The, uh, the father figure seems downplayed, maybe quite arbitrarily. Um, so it is interesting how not only this movie, but also anime in general, very often displaces the, the, the paternal and the maternal figure kind of like to, to cast a, a stronger light on, on how the younger um, characters develop seemingly on their own, seemingly by themselves. But maybe we could argue for the, the, the paternal character by contrast to Kay's uh, father, right? Um, so we have two, two poles of the spectrum. On the one hand, we have, I mean, we have in, the, in any case, two fathers who have lost their wives, right? Um, who have children, um, but maybe they, they, despite their good intentions, if you think that also Kay's father is originally or initially as acting out of a good intention, despite their good intentions, they are, they are not reaching to their kids. But then they respond to this failure in diametrically opposed ways. Mm -hmm. So Susu's father lets her be. I mean, he asks his decline, knows that something wrong is going on, but cannot really push his way, or he, he decides not to push his way. He, he gives her full reign, right? And you can, you can argue about whether that is, that is helpful, for, like whether that is part of the solution or part of the problem. Whereas uh, Kay's father is clearly um, overreacting. He, he's also grieving, but then in, in, in his grieving, he's turning against his own flesh, his own children, right? There's that earlier scene where Kay's father says, now like in a, in a video, I guess in a GoFund Raise Me video, we, we lost the mother of my children, but we are still a happy family, right kids? And the kids are like, <laughs> right? So there, there's, I think, I think those two figures are designed by way of contrast. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think, or why, why would you find that satisfying or still dissatisfying? Well, now this thought just arrived in my arrived in my head, appeared in my head. That um, what's good about this is that um, Suzu's father is not like comically um, super close and caring father that is so super close to his daughter after after the the uh, loss of his wife right mm -hmm. like he doesn't know how to deal with the situation probably so he just retracts and, and and retreats from from it which is somewhat more believable rather than making him like a total you know perfect guy that that understands his daughter and, and is there for her all the time, etc. And, and yeah, like it's not a super uh, fluffy um, cotton candy relationship. That's, that's actually good. Um, yeah, it was, it was just not elaborated enough to, for me, but like there was a lot of plot to be done <laughs> to be covered over the movie. 
So, so that's maybe the, the, the case here. So, um, well, what maybe, maybe an, another issue that is sort of um, puzzling me about this, um, this movie, and I think others too have, have been troubled about it, is, is really the, the, the reference to beauty and the beast or, or the polarity of the beauty and the beast. So they, they, they were, I mean, it's like a theme that sort of pops up everywhere, right? Like there are like these odd couples already before entering the new world, like, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, Luca and, and Kaminshin mm -hmm. who, who are, I mean, the one is a beast, it's, it's, a, it's a buffoon of sorts, right? A well-meaning buffoon, but he, he's like a beast type. Luca is the bell type, right? Mm -hmm. In the real life. Mm -hmm. so, so we have a reference already there, but then when the, we enter into the you world and when bell becomes bell and, and meets the beast, the, there is this back and forth, there is this coming and going, there, there is this mutual attraction that is, well, at first blush, difficult to understand. And then, and then there are all these other references to, to the castle, the beast, the beauty and the beast. People will necessarily think of their uh, previous encounters with this story, with Disney, right? And there, it seems to me that there is like clear allusion, a bit of a, of a paraphrasing or quoting of, of Disney here, um, but also with a difference. And, and commentators on this movie have been puzzled by it. They think that it is the part of the movie that works the least uh, well, uh, that almost seems, seems redundant. But um, maybe it would be, it would be worth uh, thinking through that so what do you think about that? Well, the, 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 the first strange thing is that when she enters you, she gets healed immediately, like almost automatically, like she's already healed, right? Because she couldn't like put out her voice and now she can be the best singer in the world. While he, upon entering the, the world, it's not... It's not in any way healed. Like it doesn't give him. I know if this, if these fights that he takes on um, are uh, g give way to his pent up emotions or or, or 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 something, but it doesn't seem that that his situation is in any way uh, progressing. While like she becomes more open in the real world as well thanks to her success, let's say, in, in, in the virtual world. Yeah, um, yeah. I also saw those reviews and, and, and they keep saying that um, the whole um, Beauty and the Beast thing was kind of forced and, and it was like overdid a bit, like so too close to, that, that, that the resemblance was too much, too strong, like they, they pushed it too hard. I don't know. <laughs> well, le le let's try this. Because um, I, was, I, I, w I was hoping to, to, I mean, I can admit, by the way, that, that for a first viewing, it's sort of too much, right? And, and it seems distracting, right? Like too, too strong of an homage to, to, to its uh, predecessors. Um, it would be more more useful, or it would be more interesting if we if we if we highlighted the contrast or the difference. Mm -hmm. So, so what I took as as a main contrast that helps the story is 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 the following. Um, take a minute, or, or or consider for a minute here the animated version of Beauty and the Beast. So, I I don't know the one that was played by um, Hermione. Or, yeah, Hermione. I don't I don't I yeah. don't know that version. Um, 
I'm fine with Disney's version. It's just gorgeous. It's well worth uh, looking at. But that's really a story about saving a, fall, a fallen beauty, right? It is, it is about how the beauty of Belle ultimately overcomes and restores the beauty of, of the beast, right? So it is, it is about the, the rescuing of beauty. Now, it also had an element of self-sacrifice and resurrection, right? So the beast earns um, Belle's heart by saving her, by ultimately surrendering himself to Gaston and, and, and his minions and um, fighting not without courage, but also not without compassion. Um, he seems to die without fulfilling the promise, but actually by dying the way he does, he, he, he fulfills the condition, right? Of the enchantment put in place on him and, and he's given back everything, right? Including his, his, his beautiful outward appearance. So we have at the end of the Disney movie, uh, a fully restored person, uh, beautiful without, beautiful within, beautiful everything, it's a happy ending, right? Um, in all versions of the Beauty and the Beast story, like for example, um, Jean Cocteau's, which, which is also well worth um, watching, uh, uh, La Belle et la Bête, um, there's a transition from dark Gothic to, to light. So, so there's kind of like an aesthetic redemption. There's, we enter and the world is full of, I mean, the castle is full of gargoyles and it's kind of like dark creepy and then afterwards there's a, there's a, there's a nice aesthetic res, um, restoration of sorts. What I think um, Studio Chiso with this movie wanted to propose was the following. Let's think of a, of a Beauty and the Beast situation in the virtual life where Beauty, so the beauty of Belle is actually matched up with real everyday tragedy, right? What will it take for this particular Belle to, to, to save this particular beast from actually a really ugly and scary real life scenario, namely being the victim of, of child abuse, right? And, and, and so that seems like, a, like an interesting poetic ambition of sorts. Let's, let's, let's use this setting not just for the sake of, of decoration and bringing people back to enjoyable moments from our movies, but actually let's ask what it will take for beauty to save this kind of real life beast, harmed beast. Anyway, so. Maybe I'm just I'm just mentioning what is quite obvious about the plot of the movie, but but I still think it is it is at least a worthwhile ambition. Whether it succeeds the whole way so as to justify it, that could still be debated. But 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 it is an, at least an interesting question because it is about indeed reconnecting, not ending up, not ending up in a in a happily ever after, and that's that's not how the movie ends. But how do we end up back in real life um, made more manageable? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, pre please refresh my memory on the original Beauty and the Beast. Um, was Belle like a perfect character from the beginning or did she have to face any kind of um, change before she could save the beast? It seemed very minor. Um, I will, I will, I will have to 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 watch it again and, and do a more in-depth analysis. But I have I have the impression that that in the original movie, so the Disney uh, animated version, uh, she had very little to well, she had fears to overcome, right? But. Um, 
what I mean, the one who goes through a greater conversion is, is definitely the beast. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In this movie, in Bell, it is the emphasis is more on, on Bell's conversion, right? Right. So that's an interesting contrast. Okay, and and, and the characters are, I think, more similar in a way. Than, than in original Beauty and the Beast, where you have like those two elements which are on kind of the opposite ends of the spectrum, right? Like the, the, the beauty <laughs> and the ugliness, right? And and here, like they both are in the same, they are on the same boat, kind of. Like they both lost their mothers, and they both have to cope with that. <sighs> I have a very wild idea. I don't know if I could make sense of it in any way. So there is this guy on the internet who analyzes memes. I think it's called like meme analysis or something like that. And he deals with, with symbolism of, of, of memes, right? And his claim is that the internet is the devouring mother, is the um, collective anima of humanity that that takes you in like and 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 covers all your needs but never lets you go <laughs> it wants you to stay with her all the time right like it, that she can entertain you for <laughs> forever <laughs> but just just be the good son and stay inside and like i was trying to make like it's a wild idea but i love it i like the the internet as a, as a collective anima is just just perfect for me but i i wanted to like connect it to the movie like the, the, those two characters lost their mothers their real mothers and they enter the the internet to have this like a prosthetic mother <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can if I can like go any further with that thought. <laughs> I think, well, um, I think of the internet more as a, as, as a siren figure. There's there's a lot, but okay, I'll have to chew on the on the devouring mother. Maybe maybe it is truer than I'm comfortably uh, accepting at at this moment as a, as an internet user. Yeah. Um, it, it could, yeah, there's there, there's a sting to that. There's a sting to that. Um, whether you is like a devouring mother. Well, there, there there is a sense in which, when, at least in Bell's Susu's case, when she enters you, and becomes Bell, she. I thought of this, she, she becomes in the image of her mother, but on a surface level, her mother could sing, her mother could swim. There's this rehearsal uh, or like the, this very nice presentation right before the, the, the concert where she swims. And there are dolphins, right? It would explain for, for the sea animal imagery quite nicely. And so they you could say that by becoming Belle, in a way, um, Susu takes on her mother. She becomes partly her mother. There, there is, and so she sings, and it's a very successful figure. The arc of the movie goes then from assuming kind of like an, an, an appearance of sorts and a rehearsal of the mother to actually um, understanding the mother more deeply particularly her self-sacrifice, right? So right as uh, Susu is about to, to sing that, that, that beautiful song that lightens up everybody's hearts, right? She, she, in that moment, when she realizes that she's exposing her true face and her true self in order to really help somebody, right? Then she remembers again what her, what her mother did. And, and surely that's a very pathetic moment. Like it, 
obviously from that moment she begins to sing from the heart and and the song is very sad but uplifting in a strange way it carries everybody um yeah but 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 still there is it is at that moment when she enters into the depths of her mother really what 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 marked her mother's life and death right this capacity to disinterestedly save another person for the sake of another person right and that's that's where the final arc of the of the story emerges so there's yeah let's 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 take the devouring mother Let, let's say that bell how about this conquers that the right. devouring side of the mother mm -hmm. to to become the the saving or the life-giving mother in real life right so there's an entrance and a departure from mm -hmm. well that's that's exactly what her mother did like yeah she didn't um try to you know be this this helicopter parent for her daughter like she gave her away she gave her the freedom which is like this um very uh, blessed virgin kind of thing to do to <laughs> let your offspring go um and then and then suzu does the very same thing so she matures at the same time and yeah this 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 watery imagery is is so omnipresent like she starts with with singing on a whale right and then yeah. there are those dolphins and and when she changes her outfits it's like the bubbles springing and and water flowing it's like there's a ton of it and well water generally is is you know the domain of chaos and the feminine so it's it's really connected to to well her being like her her womanhood her femininity but but also like to to her mother particularly because she she was a good swimmer and 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 she died in that water and <laughs> yeah so so suzu crosses that that strange bridge quite often and, and there's always something important happening when she crosses the bridge over over that that river right it's a strange bridge because it doesn't have any bars that that like would <laughs> save you from falling into that so so it's a it's a quite a sim, it's quite a symbolic bridge it, it's almost as if susu is where she wants it or not having to confront the i mean the memory that that the water will bring right yeah. of how her mother uh dies now there's yeah there the there there is a question of whether that encounter continuous encounter with the water um by itself becomes becomes salvific it, it just seems like like it isn't like actually she needs to she needs to do what? She needs to go into a virtual world where, per definition, there is no water. Mm -hmm. And and then rehearse being that person that swims and that is free in the water and that and, and take on all those 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 water related symbols virtually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, it is it is a superficial type of overcoming. But it's not nothing. It's the beginning, right? Um, it plays a role in her uh, final reconciliation, let's say, with, with 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 the past, right? A reconciliation that happens by herself um, doing the same, or like knowing what it takes to do this and why her mother had to leave her. Um, the kind of person that her mother was, mm -hmm. yeah. So the, the, the elemental there is very interesting. Okay. But why don't you tell us about the face? Because that's, the, that's I think, the, the gist of the story or the most crucial moment and element yes. that you notice there. Yeah, without a doubt. Let's say it is, it is one that can first stupefy the viewer because... It, it leaves so much unexplained. It's, it's kind of random, but but I think that the 
that the that the producer of this movie, the director of this movie, he 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 must have had some kind of understanding of the of the power of the face. It is a theme that is um, that's important in in, in recent uh, contemporary philosophy phenomenology. Um, I'm thinking of, for example, figures like Emmanuel Levinas, who who has a lot to say on the power of the face of the other, um, but also, and more closely related to, to the movie, I would say figures like Freud, who, who, who thought of the problem of sublimation. So how is it that, that, that my drives become um, redirected towards a higher reality um, and not just fulfillment? And this idea, if we want to go to, let's say, the, the clear and easier presentation of it, let's take this all the way back to Plato. Uh, one of the dialogues that Plato wrote on love, which is very famous, is, is the Phaedrus. And in the Phaedrus, there is this description of, a, of an encounter with the face. All right, so bear with me, because I have to tell you a little story. So in, in the Phaedrus, um, Plato, through Socrates, conceives of the soul as a chariot with a charioteer and two horses. It's a very classical image for the soul. The charioteer is the voice of reason, and the two horses represent the appetites and the, the, that in us which thirsts for righteousness. So the concupiscible appetites and the irascible appetites. So, fair enough, reason directs, but reason does not move, the appetites move us, right? So, not just the mind, but the heart is needed, and the heart could move in, in two different ways. Good. So, in the Phaedrus, um, Plato examines the situation where the charioteer and the two horses are drawn towards the beautiful boy. So that's that's in the context of, of, of Greek um, um, cultural standards for beauty. For the Greeks, uh, post pubes and boys were most attractive. They were a symbol for beauty, um, also because they were most successful in the Olympics. That, that's a different story. But sticking to Plato's image, um, the charioteer and the two horses so the three parts of the soul are drawn towards the beautiful face of the boy. And as they begin to ride, the, the charioteer and the irascible horse, the noble horse, they realize that they could trample the beloved, so the beautiful boy on their foot, if they give free rein to the appetite. So they try to negotiate with that or their horse to slow down, to stop, to postpone, etc. But then again, the, the, the appetitive horse reanimates, wins over the irascible and the rational, and pushes the chariot back um, into the chase. And so they're about to hit the, the beautiful boy until except that at this moment, let's say, the charioteer, so the voice of reason, is reminded of beauty itself in Plato's transcendent world of forms by the face of the beautiful boy, and then janks the two horses um, so that the, one of them goes up, right, with the haunches up, and the other one goes down to his haunches. And then, instead of trampling the beloved underfoot, there is this platonic love. There is reverence for the beautiful face that has reminded the charioteer of beauty itself. And then he begins to grow wings. Okay, so here we have a picture of how when the other shows his face, the lover's love can turn from lost and wantonness to something holier, like a deeper kind of longing, right? A longing for something transcendent, right? 
So it is, it is thanks to this encounter that um, a boy meets girl situation ends up becoming like a boy meets girl meets God situation, right? There, there, there are three to this party. Okay. So this works very well with love in Plato, but as Freud, uh, I think also Lacan could, 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 could include here, um, it also works very well for the situation of hate, right? So, so what happens when, when, when let's say you are, you are filled with hate or rage and, and you are beside yourself? Well, let's say that you are about to strike the face of the other, but then when the other shows his face or her face, right? And then at a very deep level, it dawns on you that he or she is Imago Dei, right? For some reason, you cannot, you cannot finish through. You, you, you cannot really punch through. You cannot harm or kill the face of the other anymore, right? Um, because again, you're, you, are, you are beginning to, to experience something greater than just, than just the, the other. And so it is very interesting that, that these two happens in the movie. While Belle, well, Susu is shielding with her back the, the, the two kids, so Kay and his brother, right? And who are kind of like crouching, you know, beneath her. Um, for as long as she's showing her back, she's still vulnerable to the attacks of that, that Kay's father. Just as Kate himself only shows his back to his father and then gets bruised by his father over and over again. And, and the, the hardest scene, the hardest moment comes when, when indeed uh, Kate's father wounds um, Susu's cheekbone from behind. He can do that because he's not seeing her face. But then when she turns around and just shows him her face without, that is not deformed by any gesture whatsoever, just her plain, simple face and her stare, her gaze on him, right? He, he tries to punch her. He, he, he even tries to man up and, <clears throat> and it's like her face, the manifestation of her face, the disclosure of her true face. Um, stops him, delivers him from, from that maddening rage. He has to turn around and leave. Um, so, so I think that that's a, that's, 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 a, that's a very strong and powerful theme. By revealing her real face in you, in the you world, Susu actually breaks through um, Kay's dissatisfaction with everybody who has tried to help him out before. Right and actually builds real trust. Then, in the real life, by showing her real face, in trying to to defend, right, the the, the two boys, she in a way, she in a way saves them and also delivers the man from from his rage. So it is that that's what I take to be as as a, as a very powerful insight that when or real face is revealed, we can, we can overcome dreadful everyday evil when, when our face becomes vulnerable and we deal with that vulnerability, not by concealing it or hiding it, but by showing it, right? Um, a real deadlock of a situation can be overcome. And I want to tie this back to something Christian, if you would allow me, because there's, um, there's much to be said or thought about turning the other cheek, mm. right? Um, well, I don't know if I'm reading too much into it, but when you turn the other cheek, right? Like, what do you actually reveal? You reveal the fullness of the face, right? So, so, so Jesus might not have been given the advice, might not have necessarily given the advice, well, let yourself be beat up, no. It might be something more like a show still your real face, which might give an opportunity for the other to stop doing what he's doing. 
right? Um, showing the vulnerable face. Okay. Wow. And she also incorporated beauty at that moment, right? Because throughout the movie beforehand, like she was always hiding actually when she was talking to Shinobu, like she wouldn't look into his eyes and like she, she was always concealing herself, right? right? She didn't find herself attractive or beautiful. And here she reveals the face. <clears throat> so, so like she takes on that beauty. She becomes beauty. Becomes a beauty indeed, and not just virtually in, in, in a world. Now, here's, if you would allow me a second small platonic theme to come on board here. In the same passage in the Petrus, so, so Plato has just described through Socrates how the lover has his love perched, right, um, and purified. It is by looking at the, the, the beautiful face of the other. But then right after that, he tells the story of how the beloved, so the one who is beautiful, how the beloved is, is saved or how she recognizes or how she's reconnected to beauty itself through the love of the lover. And it's, it's, it's an interesting problem, isn't it? How can I fall in love with um, someone who's not beautiful? Or if you want to put it in more theological terms, how can I fall in love with, with an invisible God? A God who, 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 whose face I do not see. Mm -hmm. And in this, te in this text in the Phaedrus, right, um, Socrates describes the situation of touch. He says that it is by actually through touch that the beautiful one realizes the inner beauty of the other recognizes that, that, the, that the virtuous lover is also beautiful and then has a pathway towards uh, beauty itself or is able to recall beauty itself. Okay, um, let's bring that back to Bell. So how does Kay recognize Bell or recognize that Susu is Bell? He doesn't take her word for granted. Right, he's too suspicious. He has been approached too many times before by well-meaning people who haven't changed a, a thing, right? Um, but as Susu is first protecting him and his brother, right, she, she hugs him and there's, there's that touch in the way that she hugs him that makes him realize this is Belle because in the, the, the U world, right? It was through not just her song and her appearance, but through that gesture that, that he, he was moved, he recognizes her, right? Mm -hmm. He recognizes, recognizes her by something uh, invisible. And then he can freely confess his love uh, for her. And, and it, is, it is the love of a 14 year old boy. It is, there's something very, very tender about it, um, very innocent about it. But in any case, that that too is worth pondering. How 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 can the beautiful one also be be redeemed, or how can can how can I recognize the true face of the other person? It might have to do with with what I cannot see, but with something that I can touch. And I like it that this movie highlights that, that there's, there's after all something like, like contact, um, like the touch of the other, the non-sensual touch of the other that, that can nevertheless uh, reveal something divine and transcendent to me. The other and beauty itself. So actually the most... Um popular scene from this movie among you know, viewers is actually the 
um, the one that that also is about that, but in a slightly different way. When it's the scene at the train station, again between two worlds, it's a meeting place on a bridge of sorts where you have Kamishin and Luca admitting to having feelings towards each other, which is like the the very same concept, but presented in a, like in, in, in it's a parallelism, right? It's a some something. It, it's it's a di different thing, but but it's the same concept, right? That's one of the most. That's one of the scenes I also enjoyed tremendously, and I couldn't quite figure out fully why. Maybe I still haven't figured out fully why. There's something very clumsy about it. About this. Yeah, this classic machine uh, who, I mean, whose stars are so perfectly aligned as to like ask the right question. Yeah, thinking a joke and not actually ends up being the the question that discloses the true feelings of Luca, and she hides her face. <laughs> right, and and how much trouble he has with like a approaching her face right how how reluctant he is to accept this reality to like turn the other cheek let's say <laughs> yes yes he can so so again she discloses in her vulnerability mm -hmm. her feelings and mm -hmm. and and he he just he just he's too overwhelmed by it he yeah. can't he can quite, I mean, he would rather run away, but then he's he's brought back, right? He's asked that question, aren't you happy? Don't you think that this is, this right. is a blessing? That's, yes. He helps you. And, and, then, and then he mans up and he takes a real manning up of him. And then he asks that weird question also, what are your hobbies or what, are, what music do you listen to? Oh, I like Belle. Oh, yes, I like her too. And, you remind me of her, yeah. etc. And it's a weird uh, conversation, but it is a very, very touching um, scene uh, where indeed you see an echo of that face-to-face -face encounter, right? Um, so this is kind of like a like a like an Easter egg. There's or a Kinder egg. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's like that mirroring that sub plot that mirrors yep. the bigger plot that mirrors the, yeah. the real world plot, right? And, and we call it the matryoshka. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Yeah, very good. And 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 again that's also that's also true of, of, of love, isn't it? There's there, there's a dramatic sweat, blood, tears, mm. uh, tragic then there is also just just the comic, the comic facing up to the other, the, the realization that, that the other indeed is in love and taking ownership of that and how that actually opens up a real horizon, not a fictive horizon, a real horizon for the face-to-face -face encounter. Okay, so mm, let's wrap it up somehow because it's getting late. <laughs> Think we cover yes. a lot of ground. Um, yeah, oh, we're yeah. turning into pumpkins. So <laughs> a good essay needs and needs a conclusion. <laughs> what would it be? Well, if you if you if you have a concluding word, you can you can start and I can follow. No, so um, I mean, you started with a conclusion. I think that that beauty will save the world, and and yeah, so. Bell means means beautiful, right? And it's so it's so obvious in in in, in that. Um, yeah, I wonder what's the connection between Bell, like the her name Suzu, and, and the bell that she used, and then Bell as a as a as the as the beautiful one. So like the waking up is is beauty waking up <laughs> something. Yeah. She woke up that world. 
yeah, a, a, a beauty that is a kind of, or what, what is the role that beauty plays? It is, it is not an end of the all of it all. It's a, it's a harbinger. It is a, it is like a bell. It calls us to, um, in a, in a, in a Christian context, what, so if I could use here the words of, of Jean-Louis Chrétien in his essay, Does Beauty Say Adieu? He, he makes the new claim that, that beauty initially draws us to itself, but actually ultimately wants to send us away from itself and towards the source of beauty, right? right. Um, well, that's also what a bell does. Right. Doesn't, like it, it wakes us up it draws us to itself. That's what we hear. But the point like is not the church to, bell, <laughs> like the church bell. But but the point is is that it, it directs us elsewhere. Mm -hmm. It calls us up, directs us in a in a in a in a different direction. Um, certainly, I mean, art is to be is is enjoyable for its own sake. It is not just didactic. Um, the, the, the movie will, will stand on its own as an excellent, I still think excellent uh, movie, even if people don't think it is the best that, that Studio Chisu has, has produced, but um, it is, I, I still think it is, it is enjoyable. If it does give us a, um, a lesson though, or if somebody can make a lesson from it, I think it, it should be the following that that um, neither the real world as it is, nor the fictive world is, is enough. Um, the world as such is, is not enough or hearts long for something more. However, right, where or, or peace lies for the time that we are in the world is, is, is in something like a, Truth, a truthful disclosure of ourselves, and 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 the the courageous assuming of the vulnerability of ourselves of our face, right? So, so not only turn your face, turn your cheek, but but um, be truthful. Do not hide. Um, take it as a as a as a lifelong task. To reveal more fully, and to be more who, more fully who you truly deeply are, or better, who you truly deeply are called to be. And in its strength and weakness, in its vulnerability and 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 beauty. Okay. Thank you for joining me for this. Um, Thank you for the call. In <laughs> interpretation of Bell. Uh, it was awesome. Thank you, Javier. And I Thank hope you. we can do it again with another anime. I have a oh. few in the pipeline. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll coordinate. We'll coordinate. <laughs> Thanks very much. Yeah, All righty. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And yeah, until next episode. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.